It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary. We are back for yet We're another episode. We're back. Episode three. What's going on, Gary? Not bad. How how's your weekend? It was a pretty good weekend, I will say. I didn't do anything. And, you know, that's always the sign of a good weekend for me. <laughs> what about you? I had a great weekend. Uh, yeah, actually, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Uh, I woke up this morning to this guy uh, creating this, like, Twitter storm of a, of a Mark Johnson Twitter storm. I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, here's okay, the, I've got it up on this. Explain this to me, because I, I missed this somehow, and I'm the Twitter person somehow yeah. i don't know what this is i i don't know i just love these kind of cases where this happens but this is this porter this reporter in idaho and um mm -hmm. they were setting up a bio like a twitter page with his bio on there and they had each one of the reporters record their name right so he comes on and say mark johnson right and and then that's all he says so you what happened is once you you know he's on twitter once you set up his once this kv it's k this television station ktvb um, in Idaho, once you, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to learn, if you wanted to learn more about them, you'd click on their name and it would tell them their, it tell you all about this guy, Mark Johnson. Right. But if you click on this, all it does is say Mark Johnson, which is what his name is. Cause he said his name. Well, you know, next thing you know, millions of people are tweeting out Mark Johnson all night long. Cause this happened from <laughs> 11 o'clock last night until this morning. And I woke up this morning with millions of tweets. that just said, Mark Johnson. And I was like, who is this Mark Johnson guy? And it happens to be this <laughs> random reporter in Idaho. But don't you love it when stuff like that happens? Yeah. That's like, that's only something that could happen on Twitter. So yeah. like, that's very, very like internet humor. It's a, it's a um, slow news day. Slow news day. It has to be slow news day. <laughs> yeah. Well, not for our industry, though, because there, there's there been some stuff going on. Gary, you wrote a blog that we published yesterday. Um, there's like a chip situation, like globally yeah, th right a, now. So there's a chip shortage um, going on uh, globally. Um, and basically what it means is uh, like, Look, if you if in fact, if you Google this, OK, this is our this is the, the picture on our website. Right. You can go read that at raypubs.com. Mm -hmm. It's a it might even be trending now, but it's the top. It's the number one blog on our site right now. Um, if if you Google this, you j Google chip shortage, you're going to see tons of articles that pop up about uh, the chip shortage. Um, and what's happening is there is a chip shortage uh, created by COVID. Everyone went home. Everyone had to go back and then they had to kind of restart. Uh, but what happened is everyone cut their production and because everyone thought the economy was collapsing. And then now all of a sudden production is ramped back up because right. the economy didn't collapse. And we have this big chip shortage. Now, it hasn't hit our industry like it has the consumer market, but it's going to hit our industry. So I wrote about how it's going to hit our industry. And I, in the article, I tell you how to avoid it being a problem for you. So I'd recommend that you take a look at raypubs.com and read that because this will affect you as an integrator if you don't plan for it. Yeah, that's that's a big hint on the advice that you give integrators and everyone who's trying to prep and make sure it doesn't hit their businesses super hard is plan ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Another what? big blog that I want to talk about this week uh, is from Bob Snyder. He uh, and I collaborate to create Rave Europe for all of you. So uh, you can go to Rave Pubs. We have a Rave Europe site if you want to see what's going on over in Europe in that AV industry. Um, and Bob wrote about this Microsoft study that recently came out that kind of is like a temperature report for how different employees in different workforces are handling the workforce right now. And uh, not well is uh, basically what Bob says. Uh, basically, that hybrid work is inevitable. People are tired right now. People are burnt out. Uh, higher ups in those positions aren't really reaching people like they should. And um, basically, people are burnt out and tired and everything sucks. Well, I think that this is uncharted territory. Like, you know, I think yeah. in defense of all the companies and all the people out there, no one's, you know, there's no, there's no roadmap for how to handle this. No one knows what to do. But yeah, no. I mean, I think there's there's Zoom slash Teams fatigue. There's everything digital fatigue. There's 
there's a fatigue of wearing masks, uh, you know, the workplace is, is not immune to what's going on here. So yeah, I, I love that article. And, uh, and cause like, it is really hard not to get burnt out right now. Like I feel like at the beginning of COVID when we went to work from home, I was like, Oh yeah, working from home. I can wear my pajamas every day. I'm not going to leave my house. And then I like, didn't leave my house for two weeks and immediately was like, I hate everything. So I think that like now that so many of us just like haven't really left our house that much f in the past year, we're all just like exhausted and like our brains are just kind of like falling apart. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. we are, you and I are in the office, right? As you can tell, we are, you are we're in the, in the office. office. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so we, we, we can't kind of get lonely being here when you're, it's only a few of us here, but yesterday we had a record day, literally record day. We had we 12 did. people here at one time, which is the most we've had in over a year. Um, mm -hmm. speaking, about, have, speaking about going to the office, uh, guess who's going to a different office? But you're going to tell us. Mark Coxon. He's going <laughs> to a different office. He's now working for HD Distributing. Um, they hired Mark Coxon as Western Regional Sales Director. Mark, as you know, is a big blogger for us, does a bunch of uh, educational content for us. Uh, you can read all of his blogs at raypubs.com. Click on the blog squad link right here and you drops down and you can go to Mark Coxon's blogs and you read all of his blogs. So he's now working for HD Distributing. And um, hey, congratulations to not only Mark, to, but to HD Distributing Distributing because he's a great catch. He's Although he's Western Regional Sales Man Director, I suspect he's going to help them globally. Yeah. I, I wish that he could have joined us today because I do want to like ask, like, you know, I mean, sometimes you just get tired of doing one thing for so long and you want to move on to the next thing. But I'm interested to see like why he wanted to jump into a different role, what he's excited about. Um, I'm excited to ask him about that soon. I, I um, asked him to join me today, but he was in his car and said it was going to be difficult for him to join. But hopefully he'll join us in an yeah. upcoming broadcast. Uh, That'd be but fun. You, I, 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 by the way, I had some great news over the weekend. You know, oh, my yeah, daughter, you're, swim, you're, my you're daughter swims in college. Dad moment. Yeah, proud dad moment. My daughter swims in college. This is her swimming the 1,000 uh, at her conference championship meet for Pepperdine. And she won the entire thing for the conference. Clap, 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 okay? Hey, by the way, for those of you watching live on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're watching, you can comment on this and we'll we'll talk to you. We want to hear yeah. what you have to say. But that's her swimming the 1,000 there. And she won first place. She won the whole thing. Uh, improving, uh, beat, really by the way, second, second place was a full six seconds behind her, Steph. So I was very proud. Jeez. She got a first, second, and third place medal. There's her with her second and first place medals from the conference championship. So congratulations to her. So I just had a pl little plug in there. I had a great weekend. Yeah. I unfortunately couldn't see it live. Like all of us, I'm watching this stuff streaming. So yeah. yeah. That's, that's so exciting for her. That's so great. Yeah. I, I'm very proud, very proud uh, considering, you know, this has been a weird year. I teach, as you know, and, and my students are all at home, right? They're in their mm -hmm. dorm, their dorm rooms, they're in their bedrooms at home. They're in their living rooms. Uh, my daughter was not immune to that, but yet she trudged through and kept practicing and practicing, had the best, se best uh, season she's ever had. Speaking of having a great season, Nareva has had announcement after announcement after announcement, Steph, and you wrote about their new certification with ClickShare. Yeah, so I wanted to like talk to you a little bit about that because like we're pretty much everyone is familiar with new Reva's products. So they have the HDL 200 and the HDL 300. And these mm -hmm. are their speakers that are powered by microphone mist technology, which is like their patented technology that basically like sends out like little microphones and can pick you up anywhere yeah, that you are in a conference room. Um, yeah. Very yeah. cool so product. Just, yeah, so using but this what microphone does it mean? mist, it throws virtual microphones all over the room using digital signal processing, DSP, it makes it like there's microphones all over the room by, by doing directional mics, right? So I think that the, yeah. the mic array actually has like, I want to say something like 20 or 25 directional mics, right? That are, mm -hmm. you know, pointing at different parts of the room to pick up wherever someone is speaking. But the unique thing here is that they actually um, got it ClickShare certified. And I think, um, yeah, I think that that's pretty, it's interesting for me, to me, it's interesting that ClickShare has a certification. 
Yeah. So what does it mean to be ClickShare certified? Like, does that mean that yes. these two products are going to work particularly well together if someone buys both? Does this mean that eventually there's going to be a bundle option where people can go and buy them together? Like, what does being certified like mean? Well, well, first off, I want to say thanks to Catherine Bell, who is a great friend of mine, been in the industry for over 30 years with me, uh, for saying thank you and congratulations to my daughter. Um, but uh, but you know how there are products that are Zoom certifies, which basically means they're plug and play, right? You plug it in, Zoom will recognize it. It will identify mm -hmm. it, knows what features it can serve up to the, to the controller, and then allows it to just work. This is what ClickShare Conference certified means, is that when you plug in it, it into a ClickShare Conference device, like the CX series of ClickShare products, it will recognize this is a Nareva product, knows what it can and can't do, knows it has microphone miss, knows it's a speaker bar, you can turn the speaker on and off, so on and so forth, and it actually sets it up in its little control panel Okay. as that product. Now, of course, you can plug in any mic array into the ClickShare Conference, it'll work, but it doesn't know all the features. So by having it certified, yeah. you have a handshake between the two brands. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we've been we've been seeing that a lot in our industry lately, particularly in UCC. Like a lot of our bloggers have been writing about this kind of phenomenon of things becoming like more interoperable, uh, things certified, like software certified with this particular hardware. Like, do you think that that's something we're going to continue to see in our industry as like, we're trying to figure out like hybrid model working solutions and as people need to like take potentially like software and hard, well not software, but like hardware back and forth from the office into the home. Like, like what's your opinion for what we can expect out well, of I this? Think, I think that we are mirroring the, um, consumer market, meaning uh -huh. what happened in the home is that we've, instead of having, instead of the desire to have a network based Sonos system, everyone is like, you know, Sonos is nice, but even it, even though it's kind of dumbed down uh, home a, uh, audio, even it is complicated. It has a horrible app. We talked about that a couple of shows ago. Uh, and but what I they're doing, yeah. yeah. And what they're doing is they're putting in stuff like the the HomePod from Apple or the uh, Alexa from Amazon. So this whole idea of plug and play, you just plug it in, it connects to the internet, you can serve up any music anytime you want, is trickling up to the professional markets. So we're going to see a lot more plug and play devices. And I think this is a movement towards plug and play so that the consumer or the operator of the room or the facility doesn't have to learn how to work something. It just works naturally for them. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, I do think that this will be a trend that will, that will continue. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more simplification of our products if, if that's what yeah. you're asking. Yeah, agreed. Back to the app argument, though, I went to dinner with a friend last weekend, and he was talking about some app and was like, and I was like, No, I'm not going to download that. And he was app like, is an appetizer? No, like an app for your phone. <laughs> he was talking about what some you, app that he app. downloaded. <laughs> that was such a dad joke. He was talking yeah, about an app so. that he downloaded on his phone and was like, Oh, like, this would be great for you if you like would want to use it. And I was like, No, I won't use it. And he was like, why? I was like, I, I don't download apps. I hate them. And I like, uh, I remember a few people commenting that like, oh yeah, I also don't download apps, but I do wonder if it is a me thing or if it is a my age group thing, because I know plenty of people who seem like to have no problem with downloading an app for each new thing that they use. But I just get overwhelmed by it. And I just want to be able to like, go on the web browser and do everything. Well, you know, you know, our website, we, you know, we've had record web traffic. Our web traffic mm -hmm. has almost tripled in the last two years. Um, and, and, but, but our, also our app traffic has increased. Like mm -hmm. more people are downloading our app. We're the only news service in the industry that has an app. So if you go to the Apple app store and you type in rave news, R-A-V-E-N-E-W-S, you'll see our app there. So yeah. people do, the advantage of using the app is that you, you always know where it is. You don't have to type in the URL. It's always there on your, on your homepage, on your, on your phone or device. So I, I definitely, but I agree, it's hard to get someone to download an app. The advantage of the app too, is we could push content to you. So for example, if, when there's breaking news in the industry, we'll push that out as breaking news. But you're right. I mean, uh, I think some people like apps, some people don't like apps. And, and that's why making good websites really matters. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I, and I do, I want to maybe like study in the f- like future if it is an age group thing or if it is just a personal preference, if there really isn't a rhyme or reason to it. But I, I'm, I'm sure that that study in, exists. I mean, yeah. the hard part, hard part is getting somebody to download an app. Yeah, to, it know, is. Entertaining content will help. And speaking of entertaining content, uh, last night after mm-hmm. all of us were in the office, we, uh-huh. uh, we were sitting around at dinner uh, uh-huh. and having drinks or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and, and then Steph goes, hey, Gary, have you seen this crazy video? And I'm like, no, I have not. And so tell us about this crazy video. Okay. And let's go to our audience. <laughs> this is all I've been talking about for two days. So this is not AV related. I'm so sorry if y'all don't like that. This is just going to be You're going to love it. This is very important to me. Um, but so basically, I see this video go viral on Twitter a few days ago. And it is of this bobcat that attacked like this man and his wife and what you're viewing it from is like the camera that's installed next to their garage door. And like, they're walking out, like everything's normal. Hey neighbor, like putting stuff in their car. And then out of nowhere, like a rabid bobcat, like runs into the frame and like jumps on the wife's back. And the man like yanks the bobcat off. Like doesn't realize. Why why don't we show him? Let's show him the video. Let's cue it up. Let's show him. Yeah, that's actually, let's let's just show them. Run the video. Run the video. Let him see it. Roll the tapes. Oh okay, so yeah, now she's walking, and then you kind of see it. Yep, you see her yeah. running. They can hear it too. Oh, they can hear it. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, he like picks <laughs> it up, like circle, he has, it has like a circle of life awesome. moment where he like picks. Yeah, and then just like but then it comes it. back after her. Yes. Oh my but gosh. my favorite part of that video is that he picks it up, like looks at it for a solid 10 seconds in its right, eyeball, right, right, and then right. just chucks it like a javelin. <laughs> but so, the sad thing is, sad thing is the, the bobcat had to be killed to figure out yeah. if it had uh, if it, it had, had rabies. Uh, yeah, rabies. So they, they could have rabies. So they so, have to get something like 30 shots or something, mm-hmm. right? So the bobcat, uh, this happened in North Carolina, by the way, everyone, because everything like this happens in North Carolina. Or Florida. Um, or Florida. Or Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but they sent the bobcat to a college near here, uh, and to get it tested and it did come back for rabies. So all of those people in that video, including the jogging neighbor have to get tested for rabies, but, um, m- maybe it's worth it. Cause that video is really funny. I, they probably hey, I want to say, say I want to say funny. thanks for my buddy, Lionel Felix, uh, sending me a great, um, super fan pack of Felix media. Ooh, I love this that's stuff. nice. It includes buttons and and uh, stickers and and things like that i love this thanks uh look at that i love it look at that what do you think you like it steph once they're doing an unboxing on instagram yeah, sorry about that. we lost you for just a second we did i should have done an unboxing there on uh, uh for you but i just want to say thanks to him Hey, yeah. did you see my article on ZV's um, digital? Somebody finally came out with a finished digital canvas box. I've been talking about how the industry needs to move to building digital canvases rather than just uh, putting up PowerPoint and keynote slides. Uh, ZV, because they're an AV over IP company, built um, a controller that allows you to put up content like a digital canvas, which basically means that you can put up multiple pieces of content at the same time. So I'll throw up a picture right now and show you what that means conceptually. So in a classroom like this, uh, where you see that window right there, Steph, that says current slide, that's the size Mm -hmm. that the screen would normally be for a classroom this large, you know, somewhere around 130 inches, 140 inches diagonal. But instead of doing that, put a project a giant 4K canvas on the wall, in this case, two 4K canvases with two projectors, and put all your content up at the same time. So while you're teaching, instead of Um, saying, hey, I'm going to show the class a video. Let me close PowerPoint. Let me open up YouTube. You Mm -hmm. actually have the PowerPoint video and the uh, the PowerPoint and the YouTube video up at the same time, and you're just playing all your content nonlinear. This box from ZV, this uh, concept from ZV, uh, which they call the Zyper Management Platform, um, allows you to do that. It is a digital canvassing platform that lets you put multiple pieces of content up on the screen at the same time because it's AV over IP. Congratulations, to ZV for taking note and coming out with this yeah. product. Very cool. Gary, when did you coin that term, digital canvas? 
I started talking about it in 2015. So yeah, I, I think it's, the problem has been first, uh, some things had to change. AV over IP mm -hmm. allows us to be done inexpensively. And then second, we needed to have 4K projection. Okay. You can't do this in, in 1080. If you do this in 1080, it works, but it doesn't look great because the resolution is not high. And if you need 4K, so you're filling a wall full of pixels um, and you, you're, 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 you're making the image look amazing. So yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. case study of the week. Um, this, I picked this case study because it is in Adrian Grenier's uh, like apartment in Brooklyn. And I thought that that was actually really interesting. I haven't done a home AV case study yet. So I thought I'd switch it up. Um, but he remodeled his like very fancy. I have no idea who that is. He's an actor. He was in Entourage. Oh my gosh. I love that guy. I know who that is now. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I, I, and like he was in a lot of nineties. Yes, yeah. he was in a lot of nineties stuff too, and that was like some of what I know him from. But yeah, he redid his apartment and did, redid it with uh, Leon speakers. I think the brand is. Yep, um, yep. And they talk about how they used a lot of like sustainable options to redo his apartment. So I thought it was very cool uh, to read the full case study. Go to our site, Rave Pubs, and click on news. You can go down to case studies and just see all the recent ones we've posted. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was very, very neat. Um, and I did want to mention that if anyone else wants to be sure that we include a certain piece of news or wants to give us some additional options to talk about in the next few shows, uh, Gary and I, you can reach out to both of us on LinkedIn. You can email both of us, find our contact information on ravepubs.com. Uh, and I'd be happy to take your news into consideration. So if there's anything that you want either of us to discuss in the next few episodes, we'd be happy to. Yeah. And look, we've we've loved doing this. Of course, all of our news is at ravepubs.com. Mm -hmm. Here's a live shot coming up here in just a second of our website. So you can see what's actually going on live at ravepubs.com. Here's us. We're actually live. Right? Oh, yeah. The week. And uh, it, we're delayed by 30 seconds, but yeah. ultimately we're live. But, you know, all of the news is there, all at ravepubs.com. Um, all of our podcasts is under Rave Radio. All of our blogs is under the blog squad. Here's the news here. And, of course, all the past rave tv episodes or under tv so if you missed any of these episodes all you have to do is go back and watch them they're all here yeah. and that's us actually delivering it live so hey steph thanks for doing this yeah. thanks for watching yeah everyone. thank you gary and thank to you everyone who's watching um i hope you join us next wednesday at noon uh where gary and i talk about the latest news for 20 to 30 minutes uh, it's gonna be and great we have to get thank out of here because our producer needs to go get her second covid19 shot yeah, she's getting her second vax today. So everybody she said wish we her had luck. To finish on time. Yes, and we're doing even better. We're finishing a few minutes early. So Madeline, this one's for you. Uh, everybody have a great rest of the week, and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up, your Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary.